which is titled uh, The Recent Progress in Case Stability of Fund Varieties. And the two speakers will be Yuchen Liu, who is currently visiting Princeton University and will be in Northwestern from next semester. And, uh, and also Zichuan Zhuang, who is currently at the MIT. And also let me remind you that after, after the, this lecture, there will be a social event on Gather Town. So if you register, you should already have the link on the Gather Town. Uh, I'll put the link in the chat here in a moment too. Okay, okay. Then if you still want to come on, you, you can find the, uh, without a registration, you can still get the link from, from the chat. Okay, so uh, you sound already? Yes. Okay, our first speaker will be you sound for, for this lecture series. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the invitation and the introduction. Uh, it's a great pleasure to speak at the Utah workshop. So uh, this will be the first lecture of the lecture series on recent progress on case stability of fund varieties. So today I will start from uh, the definition of case stability and how this concept evolved uh, in the last decade. Um, and the particular highlight uh, in the first lecture will be the Fujita Lee criteria. So if you have any questions, um, you're welcome to just unmute yourself and ask or put it in the chat. And uh, perhaps the organizer can help me to monitor that. Okay, so let me start. Okay, so first we, uh, we will recall the concept of case stability. So this notion was first introduced by Kian and later formulated algebraically by Donaldson. But as you know, they are uh, very famous uh, differential geometers. So the motivation for the, to introduce this concept is to study uh, the Calabi problem, especially on final varieties. So in other words, this case stability uh, provides an algebraic theory to characterize the existence of uh, so-called Keller-Einstein matrix on final varieties. And uh, for us as algebraic geometers, we are interested interested in case stability from various viewpoints. But I think uh, the most uh, convincing reason that we are interested in this concept is that uh, case stability provides a nice moduli theory for final varieties. Uh, and uh, this project uh, is actually was uh, started in early uh, 2010s. And uh, I think the general construction is finished uh, earlier this year. Uh, following the joint work with uh, Chen Yan and Zi Chen. So the purpose of this lecture series uh, will have two parts. So we'll first, uh, we'll revisit the developments in the last decade, especially um, focusing on how the concept of uh, case stability evolves and uh, how the moduli space of k polystable file varieties is constructed step by step. And then uh, in the next week, so then the last two lectures, we will focus on uh, the higher rank finite generation conjecture and which is now a theorem proved uh, earlier this year by myself and the Chen Yangxu and the Zi Quan Zhuang. Okay, so let's just uh, start from recalling the original definition. So I will start from uh, always calling X a uh, final variety, and here I call it Q final variety to allow a uh, mild singularities. In other words, a Q final variety is just a normal projective variety with KLT singularities, and also the anti-canonical divisor is empty. And I will always work over complex numbers, or you can also work over uh, algebraic closed field of characteristic zero. So then uh, the main, the main uh, object that we want to you know, define case stability is the so-called test configuration. So a test configuration denoted by curly X and curly L of this Q final variety X, uh, it consists of uh, the following data. So first of all, you have a map pi from curly X to A1, and this is a flat proper morphism. And moreover, this curly X carries a GM action such that this map is GM equivariant. So here I consider the standard GM action on A1 by uh, multi multiplication of scalars. And then I have this polarization L, uh, which is also a GM equivalent line bundle. 
on x that is uh, ample relative to pi. And as you see that uh, here, I have the GM actually on A1, and uh, it basically just have two orbits. So namely the open orbit A1 minus the origin and the closed orbit the origin. So if I cut out the origin, then actually I just recover my final variety X with the plurally anti-canonical polarization minus KX multiplied by some uh, integer R, positive integer R. So here I just want uh, that my test confusion if you uh, throw out the central fiber, then you just recover uh, the product of family. So which is my anti-canonically polarized X with uh, times A1 minus zero. And then uh, from this definition, you kind of see that uh, your X zero, L zero, the central fiber uh, is gonna be a GM equivariant degeneration of uh, the final variety X with uh, polarization minus RKX. Okay, so let's give an example, uh, which is uh, very classical. So I have the final variety X, which is just P1 cross P1. And you can imagine that it is embedded in P3 uh, via the, the polarization O11, which is actually half of the anti-canonical divisor. And then I can choose a hyperplane section of this the smooth quadric surface X, which give me a smooth conic curve in P2, and then I can degenerate to the normal cone of this hyperplane section. So that is precisely the central fiber X0 here. It is a, a projective cone over the, the smooth uh, conic curve in P2. So in other words, X0 is also contained in P3. And if you uh, write it in terms of this weighted projective plane, then you actually see it's isomorphic to P112. So in other words, it's just a cone over P1 of polarization O2. And uh, this task configuration is actually the family of this degeneration. And you can think about it as uh, a family over A1 where general fiber, you just see P1 cross P1 and maybe uh, dragging by a one parameter subgroup of the automorphism of P3. And in the central fiber, you see that it degenerates to uh, this, uh, this comb over conic curve. So indeed, this is, a, this is a nice test configuration in the sense that the central fiber is also a Q final variety. And actually test, config, test configurations can be, uh, can be worse and worse. So somehow your X zero can have uh, very bad singularities. For instance, you can think about in this, in the same example, I have the X to be a smooth quadric surface, but it can degenerate to a union of two planes or maybe actually even a double plane. So in which case your X zero will far from being uh, you know, normal final variety or even Q final variety. Okay, so in order to define case stability, uh, we're actually uh, looking at certain numerical invariant on test configuration. So this invariant is called the Futaki invariant. And I won't give you uh, the definition here because later on we will use mostly using a, a, an alternative definition provided by the Fujita Lee criteria. But uh, just for uh, recalling the original definition, uh, we have this we have this number Futaki invariant uh, attached to each test configuration, and it is defined either by looking at the weights of this GM action on the central fiber or by uh, using an intersection number formula proved by uh, Xiao Wei Wang and uh, Yu Ji Otaka. So then uh, the definition will be just X being K semi stable uh, is exactly the non negativity of this Futaki invariant for every test configuration. And the X is K stable if you have uh, Futaki being non negative, but also equality holds only when the test configuration is a so called trivial test configuration. In other words, you, you just have the product family and your GM action acts trivially on the X component. And then we have some concept called K polystability, which sits in between K semi stability and K stability. Uh, it is uh, requiring the net negativity of the Tucky invariant. At the same time, it says that uh, the equality holds if and only if your central fiber X0 is isomorphic to X. So if you compare 
uh, this definition of k-poly stability with k stability, then you see that uh, they are very similar, except that I, I do not require uh, in the definition of k-poly stability that my x zero uh, has a, has a, it could have a possibly non-trivial geometry. So somehow if my x has discrete automorphism group, then k stability is the same as k poly stability. But in many cases, my x will have continuous automorphism where it's certainly not k stable, but it might be k poly stable. For instance, the projective spaces, they are always k poly stable, but they are not k stable. Okay, and uh, the concept of k poly stability is, uh, is very important, especially from the viewpoint of differential geometry. Because according to the famous Yautian Donaldson conjecture, uh, X has color isometric if and only if uh, this final variety X is K poly stable. So somehow this K poly stability, which actually corresponds to the uh, you know, closed orbits in, in the sense of geometric invariant theory, corresponds uh, to the existence of color isometrics. And as we will see later, uh, the Yautian Donaldson conjecture uh, is now a theorem for all of Q final varieties. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, so now uh, we will we will look at a, a special kind of test configuration because in general, uh, a test configuration can have very bad single singularities in the central fiber. For instance, it can be uh, non-reduced and also uh, reducible, and so on and so forth. But certainly, if, if we are interested in this kind of moduli approach, they want to restrict uh, uh, your singularities to be mild. Um, so you probably don't want to consider all test configurations with, with very bad singularities in X is zero. So then um, people uh, turn their, turn their um, attention to a smaller class of uh, test configurations, which, which we call special test configurations. So a special test configuration is, uh, is that uh, I have my X and X is zero, this pair, is the so-called purely log terminal PLT. And also my L is uh, a multiple of the relative anti-canonical divisor. So here, uh, in other words, if I use a jump trick, this is ju just means that my X zero is also a Q final variety. So an example of a special test conversion is just given earlier, where you have this, um, where you have this P1 cross P1 degenerate to P112, where your P112 is actually uh, a Del Peso surface with a quotient singularity. So this is also a Q1. So this is a special test conversion. Okay, and. Uh, Certainly special test configuration form an important subclass of all test configurations. And uh, perhaps the first uh, uh, important theorem which brought uh, the techniques from mini model program into the you know, case stability world is the theorem by Li and Xu. And they show that uh, to test the case stability, Actually, uh, all these three concepts, so K poly stability, semi stability, or K stability of a final variety X, uh, it, it suffices to test uh, the sign of Futaki event only on uh, uh, special test configurations. So, somehow, Although in general, the test configuration might have very singular central fiber, but by uh, running MMB, possibly after a finite base change, uh, they show that the Futaki invariant can only decrease. So therefore, if you want non-negativity or positivity of Futaki, you just need to check them 
on special test configurations. And I, I think this is the, like the starting point of a lot of the later uh, developments. And of course, one direction of the uh, Fujita Lee criteria. Okay, um, so for today's purpose, we will also need another related definition. So we will need a so-called weekly uh, special uh, test configuration. So by weekly special test configuration, I just mean that uh, I require my uh, X and X zero to be a uh, log canonical instead of uh, PLT. And again, I have the same polarization assumption. So this, this means that uh, my X zero is a, is a SLC uh, final variety by a junction. Okay, um, so now we are ready to, uh, to start to formulate the so-called Fujita Lee criteria. So first of all, we will uh, shift our gears from looking at degenerations of uh, final variety to certain divisors on some birational model of the final variety. So we will say um, E uh, is a divisor over X. If I have E is a prime divisor containing Y, and at the same time you have Y mapped to X. So here, this is a prime divisor. And my F is, uh, F is proper and directional. So in other words, I just allow arbitrary sequence of blowups uh, on my final variety X, and I can take any divisor on this, on this higher mode on the blow. Okay, and then uh, for this divisor over my final variety, I define two invariant. So the first one is called the log discrepancy, and it's uh, of course um, comes from the the classification of singularities in minimodal program. So it's defined as follows. I have uh, this log discrepancy of E denoted by AXD to be one plus the coefficient of KY minus the pullback of KX. And I look at the coefficient along my divisor E. And then I have another invariant uh, which is called expected uh, vanishing order. And it's denoted by SX. So it is given by, first I have a constant. So here N is the dimension. And then I take the integration from zero to infinity, but indeed this is a finite integration. So I integrate uh, uh, of the volume, pullback of minus kx, which is net and big on y, and I just twist it by t times the divisor e dt. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, this is, although looks like a integration up to infinity, but actually it stops at the, the so-called pseudo-effective threshold. Um, so I denote this by T X of E, which is the supremum of T uh, such that the pullback of minus KX minus T E is a uh, big. So this is always a finite number. And then your integration is actually uh, integrating a decreasing function on this interval. Okay, so um, again, as you see that uh, this, this log discrepancy is something related to the singularity of your final variety. And expected vanishing order is something about volume. So, so the Fujita Lee criterion basically tells you that uh, these two functions govern uh, the case stability of your final variety. Uh, 
uh, so it has two parts. Uh, the first part uh, characterizes the K-semi stability. Uh, so X is uh, K-semi stable. If and only if you have this inequality, so log discrepancy is always bigger or equal to um, the expected vanishing order for, again for any uh, divisor over X. And uh, the second part characterizes uh, case stability, and this is uh, with the additional contribution by Luma Shu. So it just says that X is uh, case stable if and only if I have uh, the log discrepancy is just always bigger than uh, the expected vanishing order. Okay. So as you see that uh, um, given this Fujita Lee criteria, somehow you can replace uh, you know, this concept of case stability semi-stability or case stability, just using divisors over, over your final variety. And this you can treat these divisors as certain uh, special valuations over your, over your final variety. So somehow this, uh, this theory shifted the aspect from studying degeneration of your final variety to uh, valuations on the final variety. Okay. Are there any questions? So uh, good. So we first uh, give a proof of the uh, the backward direction. And we'll focus on the case semi-stable part. Um, so maybe mark one. So indeed that this is uh, this is a nice application of the special test configuration theorem of V and Shu. So we know that AXE is bigger or equal to SXE at this point. And uh, we want to certainly connect this to, um, to the so-called Futaki invariant of certain test configuration. But in order to check uh, X is case semi-stable, we know that uh, it suffices to show that my Futaki invariant is non-negative on uh, uh, special test configurations, right? And then uh, there's, a, there's a very fundamental correspondence that, uh, that one can attach if your test configuration has a irreducible or integral central fiber. So in this case, um, if, if my x is zero is integral, then uh, we can attach a divisor E over X from this test configuration. And the way to do it is by restricting the valuations. So we see that because X zero is integral, we have this, this valuation order of vanishing on the function field of my total space of test configuration. So this is a discrete valuation. And because I have my X, so we know that my X, uh, if I get rid of the central fiber, this is just a product of X with A1 minus zero. So therefore I know that uh, the function field of, of my curly X is actually the same as the function field of KX adjoint T, right? Because a curly X and X cross A1 are birational. Okay, so therefore I can restrict my valuation on the subfield KX. So this is again a discrete valuation. And uh, what we know from the work of uh, Buxum, uh, Hisamoto and Yosun
So actually, I can find a divisor E over X and uh, some positive or non negative integer such that uh, the order of vanishing along X is zero, and then you restrict to this smaller field is precisely B times the order of vanishing along the divisor. So in some sense, if I think about the valuation coming from the test confusion with an integral central fiber, then this is nothing but an integer multiple of some divisorial valuation on your final right. Okay, and then another crucial observation is done by Fujita and Lee. So they found that in this case, I actually have an equality between Futaki invariant and uh, this A minus S. Okay, so it's actually beta, uh, sorry, B times the beta invariant of E. And I guess I should probably introduce my beta invariant here. So my beta invariant of a divisor is just gonna be the difference between uh, these two invariants. Okay, so I can also write it as B times AXE minus SXE. Okay, so therefore you see that, uh, that somehow this equality connects to these two invariants. On one side, you have the Futaki invariant. On the other side, you have the difference between A and S, which is the beta invariant. And they are, they are the same up to this constant. So therefore, this gives you one direction of the Fujita Lee criteria. So therefore, hence, uh, we know that A X E is bigger or equal to S X E uh, for any divisor E over X. So this implies that, uh, that my Futaki invariant of X L, which is the same as B of, uh, of beta X E, is always non negative for uh, special test configurations. Okay, so this implies that my X is uh, K semi stable um, by the theorem of Li and Chu. Okay, so this gives you the proof of uh, one direction, probably the easier direction of the Fujita Lee criteria. Are there any questions? Okay, so uh, if not, then uh, we will try to try to prove the other direction of the Fujita Lee criteria. But before we do that, let me give some comment on um, the advantages of the uh, Fujita Lee criteria. So I think the first uh, advantage, as you can see from the formulation, is that uh, it uh, reduces the study of degeneration, which is uh, n plus one dimensional directional geometry problem to an n-dimensional geometry problem. So it reduces uh, n plus one dimensional to n-dimensional. So somehow this uh, this saves a lot of a lot of work in the you know construction or study of the one-dimensional higher stuff. And uh, another um, benefit that we can see from Fujita Lee criteria is, is that it is really, it is convenient uh, to work with all divisors, uh, especially some that are not necessarily coming from a test configuration. As you saw earlier that uh, if my x zero is integral, then you can restrict the order x zero and get the divisor, but certainly not every divisor come from this way. 
and uh, and it's actually uh, a subtle question to to tell which kind of divisors come from you know restriction of certain test configuration. But somehow, if we have the freedom to take all divisors, then actually we can say much more. And for instance, an evidence is given by the Fujita's uh, volume upper bound. So it just says that if, if X is K semi-stable, then the volume of your final variety is actually less than or equal to n plus one to the n, which is the volume of uh, the projected space. And the proof of this uh, volume upper bound is uh, strikingly easy uh, after you know the Fujita Lee criteria. So somehow you just need to take E to be the exceptional divisor of a blow up a smooth point on your final variety. And then you just estimate the, the S invariant because you know that your A invariant, the log discrepancy equals the dimension. And then your S invariant can be estimated just by some very easy uh, volume inequality. And then after you do this, uh, calculus exercise of integration, you find that this inequality holds. And certainly um, the exceptional divisor uh, is not necessarily always coming from test configuration, but, but somehow this is very natural from the geometry of your, of your rag. Right? Any questions? Uh, is this Fujita's upper bound a characterization of projective spaces or is it not known? Uh, it is, yeah. So if you have equality, then you can show that uh, um, if and only if your X is isomorphic to PM. And I think there are um, two proofs of this um, given by myself and uh, also. Well, this, this does give a characterization of PN among k semi stable final variety. Okay. And uh, actually, uh, after a lot of the progress on the construction of these k moduli spaces, uh, we actually realized that uh, the Fujita Lee criteria uh, basically provides. A way to uh, to bring the MMP techniques into uh, the study of case stability. So, uh, as we know that uh, in, in the study of MMP uh, after BCHM, whenever you have certain you know certain log canonical pairs then you can always extract a certain LC center and actually they can, they can do more. So if you, know, if, if you have a divisor E whose log discrepancy is less than one with respect to a log canonical pair, then you can somehow extract this divisor. So, so this is somehow uh, a very, very important technique you know, brought by MMP into the study of case stability. And this has many you know, important uh, theoretical applications. Okay, um, good. So now we will um, try to understand uh, the other direction of the Fujita Lee criteria. But before we do that, we want to first introduce this, uh, this important concept called stability threshold. So stability thresholds, as you see from the name, it is a numerical invariant which characterize uh, case stability or semi-stability of a final variety. And uh, there are actually two definitions of uh, stability threshold and both of them provide you know, important applications although toward different uh, aspects of the theory. And we will first uh, give uh, the original definition due to uh, Fujita and Odaka, which is uh, defined using a log canonical threshold. 
So their definition goes as follows. Um, first of all, I need to introduce this concept called M basis type divisor. D uh, on a final variety X, Q final variety X. Uh, has the form. So my D is actually an average of a bunch of uh, divisors, which are coming from a basis of some fluorine anti-canonical section. So where uh, NM is the dimension, of the sections of minus m kx and the s1 sm so as nm this is a basis of this vector space so in some sense a uh, basis type divisor is just uh, you know the average of um, plurality anti canonical sections coming from the basis. And uh, by putting this extra M here, you can see that my D is actually Q linear equivalent to minus K. Okay, so um, Futita Odaka's definition of uh, the stability threshold uses the log canonical threshold of M basis type divisors. So they first introduced this uh, invariant, the delta M of X, which is just defined as the infimum of the log canonical threshold of all M basis type divisors. And then um, they define the stability threshold delta X. So this is the stability threshold. To be uh, the limit, and in, in their original definition, yeah. wait, am I freeze? Okay, probably okay. So it is a limit of delta Mx as M go to infinity. So in their original definition, they didn't know that this is a limit. So they use a limb soup, but the, later it, it was uh, shown by Roman Janssen that this is indeed a limit. Oops. Uh, there might be some technical problem. Is it your computer or something with Zoom? Uh, let me try. So let me try. Do you see writing on here? Probably not. No, I don't see any, no. Yeah, there might be some, some problem with the writing. Uh, Uh, can I try uh, stop share and then share again, something like this? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry about this. Okay, that should work. Sorry about that. Sure, then you're pretty sure to share again, yeah. Okay. okay. So let me try. Okay, no, it works. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay, so um, 
Yeah, so we were just talking about uh, this uh, stability threshold, and it is defined by this if I look at the uh, basis type divisors, and then study uh, its log canonical threshold and then take the limit as m goes to infinity. So this definition uh, is closer to the theory of complements uh, because it, you know, it studies certain log canonical threshold of divisors that are uh, Q-linear equivalent to minus Kx. And, uh, and uh, later on, you will see that uh, this fits, fits into um, this um, Birkhardt's result on boundedness of complements. And uh, we use that to provide uh, certain characterization of k-stability by looking at certain LC places of complements. But uh, before that, uh, we want to somehow relate uh, this delta x to, to the theory of uh, Fujita Lee criterion that we just introduced, which is defined using log discrepancy and uh, expected vanishing order. So this is a theorem due to uh, Blum and Janssen, which just connects this definition with um, earlier A and S. So what they show is that uh, the stability threshold is nothing but the infimum of A divided by S. Where here, I just run over all divisors, D over X. So then uh, from their theorem, they also get uh, that uh, you know, another reformulation, uh, which follows from the Fujita Lee criterion, which is X is K semi stable, uh, if and only if uh, your delta X is larger or equal to one. Okay, so the reason behind uh, this uh, Bloom Janssen result is to, to sort of write your LCT as a certain infimum of, of a log discrepancy divided by the vanishing order. And they realized that this, this vanishing order, uh, which I take maximum among all M basis type divisors actually converges to the expected vanishing order in a uniform way. So somehow these two, um, these two infimum are the same after you probably change, change the order of taking infimum and limit. And this is a change of order in infimum and limit uh, boils down to a certain uniform conversion argument. Okay, so uh, now I guess uh, we can try to prove the other direction of um, the Fujita Lee criteria. So to show the forward direction of uh, Fujita Lee criteria, uh, which is uh, from case stability, you want to get this A of uh, divisors is always bigger or equal to S of a, S of E for every divisor E. Then what we need is to is to study uh, the minimizer or minimizing sequence. Let me let me write minimizing sequence of the delta in round. Which is the So uh, let me say it uh, before I, I, uh, I move on. So this approach is actually uh, different from the original proof uh, by Kento Fujita or Chili, where they uh, they study a certain approximation of the Ding invariant. And here uh, our approach is uh, is due to uh, my joint work with. Uh, Harold Bloom and Chen Xu, and also it has another version in the joint work with Harold Bloom and uh, Chu Yi Zhou. So this is uh, you can you can think about it as a, as a you know new proof to uh, the Fujita Lee criterion, but which fits in the theory um, that we want to develop later on uh, more more tightly. So somehow it it fits. It is a thing that uh, that has more more to do with, uh, for instance, the openness of of k semi stability or the properties of the modulus theory. Okay, um, so we first start from a proposition, which is not hard. 
Um, so what we observe is that if I have my delta x is less than or equal to one, then I can actually uh, just take the infimum not over all divisors, but over certain very special divisors. Where here I don't, don't take E to be any divisor, but E uh, runs through so called so called LC places of Q complement. Okay, so let me recall the definition here. Um, so a Q complement. gamma of x is just a divisor. So Q divisor gamma, which is Q linearly equivalent to minus Kx. In other words, if I look at the pair x gamma, it is the log RBL. And at the same time, uh, such that the pair uh, x gamma is log canonical. So in some sense, uh, Q complement is just a just a divisor uh, in the Q-linear system of anti-canonical divisor, which is uh, mildly singular. And then an LC place is just some divisor E um, such that the log discrepancy of E is the same as the order of vanishing. Of gamma. So, in other words, um, if I look at the pair x gamma, then the log discrepancy of E with respect to this pair equals zero. So, in a uh, usual case, you will you will think of, for instance, like a example like this. I can take my x to be p two, and then maybe my gamma to be uh, an irreducible nodal cubic curve. Then, uh, then uh, the LC places of this pair will be something like this. So I have my x gamma like this, and I can do the blow up. So let's say this point is is x zero x. Then I have y to be uh, the blow up of x on p two, and then I have my gamma y to be uh, the pullback. So f upper star gamma. Um, minus the exceptional divisor, right? Yeah, so which is which is uh, looks like this. So so you have this is a this is a pre-image straight transform and then this is the exceptional device e. Okay, so then you see that your y gamma y is a simple normal crossing. And then an LC place is just a, a toroidal blow up of, uh, of, the, of this pair. So somehow uh, you have the you know, simple normal crossing locus where these two smooth curves intersecting transversally, then you just do a weighted blow up at uh, these two. Uh, intersection points. So then you see that the LC places, they kind of form like a rational point of the dual complex, which is uh, a circle. Okay, any questions? Okay, uh, so here, uh, what we show is that uh, this delta X actually runs through uh, LC places of a Q complement. And indeed, we can use Spearcast result to, to improve it so that we can actually get LC places of some N complement. So here, N complement is something like um, maybe right here. So N complement will be I have N times gamma plus Kx is trivial, linearly trivial, and X gamma is um, not canonical. 
So somehow n complement is a uh, is a bounded complement where your gamma has a fixed uh, you know denominator in its coefficient, and uh, and by the result of Birkar, uh, he showed is the uh, is that for any Q final variety there always exists uh, n complement, and using you know some generalization of his result, you can show that uh, every LC places of a Q complement is indeed the LC place of N complement. So somehow all these uh, LC places, they, they, they form like a, like a bounded family of a certain, certain dual complex. And this, this provides like a structural um, characterization of, you know, studying the, the stability threshold or trying to, trying to check case stability. Okay, so actually the proof of this, uh, this result, this proposition is not hard. And it actually follows from the definition of Fujita Odaka. So we know that uh, Delta M X is the infimum of LCT of, of D where D is uh, M basis type divisor, right? So therefore you can just choose um, choose your D so that this infimum is, is achieved because this is a this is a bounded family of divisors and you know LCT is a constructible function on a bounded family. So therefore the infimum is naturally minimum. So therefore I can find my DM uh, achieves uh, the infimum in delta M and then I just let my EM uh, to be an LC place of this pair X delta M times DM. Because my delta M is exactly the log canonical threshold. So there will be some divisor computing uh, the LCT and I take EM to be that divisor. And then you just check that, uh, that my A, EM divided by S of EM uh, converges to delta X as M go to infinity. So here again, you need to you need to use some kind of uniform uh, uniform convergence uh, by Bloom. And you also need, uh, okay, so, so I think I, I want to say that EM is an LC place of a Q complement. So here, probably um, if my delta X is already less than one, then, then you know that delta M will be also less than one for, for M sufficiently large. Then this divisor here will be, will be smaller, smaller than minus KX if you look at its, uh, its class. So therefore you can just throw in some general hyperplane section with a suitable coefficient. This, this gives the EM to be LC place of a Q complement. And uh, if my delta X equals one, then you need some perturbation argument. But this is not hard. Okay. So as you see that, uh, that from this proposition, we just need to minimize uh, among all LC places of Q complements. And the advantage of doing that is, is, is follows from this theorem, the following theorem, that LC places of Q complements are are actually one-to-one -one correspondence to uh, the so-called weakly special test configurations. So on the one hand, you have a weakly special test configurations with uh, irreducible x0 or let's say x0 integral. And on the other hand, you have LC places 
of Q complements. So this is uh, in the joint work with Harold Bloom and uh, Chen Xu, where we show that uh, indeed these two collections are equivalent. So somehow, if you start from a weekly special test configuration, in some sense, this is like a log canonical degeneration of your final variety, then you can run this, run this uh, restriction thing, right? You take the order vanishing of x0, restrict to the function field of x, and that will give you some device. And this device must be LC place of Q complement. And on the other hand, if you have LC place of Q complement, then you can show that it always come from certain weekly special test configuration. So something behind this is, is we use uh, the finite generation result of the BCHM to show uh, finite generation. of certain graded ring. So namely, if I start from um, an LC place of Q complement, they want to construct a test configuration out of it. So what you do is you take the product family X cross A1, and then you, you just extract this LC place, uh, maybe, um, maybe with uh, like a Gaussian extension of, of that valuation. And then you run a certain mini model program and hope to show that uh, at the end you, you end up with a, with a good minimal model, which is exactly your weekly special test configuration. So then this is, this is basically guaranteed by BCHM. Okay, um, so therefore, as you see that, uh, that uh, together with this proposition plus the theorem, um, we can actually show that uh, that my delta x is uh, is the infimum of all divisors e, where you have ax e over sx e, uh, where e induces a weekly special s configuration. Okay, so using this, we are able to prove the other direction of uh, Fujita Lee criteria. So recall that what Fujita Lee said. Uh, it says that, uh, okay, so now I want to prove this direction. So it says that uh, X is K semi stable if and only if I have this A invariant is bigger than S invariant. Uh, bigger or equal to. So therefore I have, so assume X is K semi-stable. And we just need to show that, uh, that uh, A is bigger or equal to S for every E, which is the same as saying my Delta X is bigger or equal to one because Delta is the infimum of A over S. And now assume to the contrary, that you have delta x is less than one, and we want to reach some contradiction. Then um, by this result, uh, the proposition plus the theorem, we can find a divisor E inducing a weekly special test configuration such that my AX E divided by SX E, it is a minimizing sequence. So in other words, it's less than delta X plus some very small uh, number epsilon, which is also less than one. And uh, now you see uh, the problem because my E induces a, a test configuration. And I know that uh, it induces, let's say, induces test configuration X E L E. Then I know that the Futaki invariant of this guy is equal to the beta invariant, which is you know some some number b, and here b must be positive times A X E minus S X E. 
But then you see that this is strictly negative because uh, I assume that the delta is less than one and I get A is, A is less than S for this particular healthy player of company. So this is a contradiction. Okay, so this finished the proof of the forward direction of theta leap criteria. And I think I, I should probably stop here. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's first thank Yutsen for the lecture. So, so any question? Okay, since no, then let's thank Yutsen again. And uh, let, let me remind you, there is a Garretang I think you, you probably everybody has a link or you can just uh, go, uh, yeah, now I think Carl just put the link in the, in the chat. So you can just uh, connect now and uh, we'll probably see you there. Okay, Let, uh, we, don't have a lecture. I, we don't have a lecture tomorrow. So the summer school will resume on Thursday.